Hi, I'm Dan Linstead, and I'm here to answer another question for you. What are some of the differences between third normal form and data vault modeling? So let's start with a very brief history on this. Uh, third normal form was originally built for OLTP, online transaction processing. It was never, ever built for data warehousing or intended for, for use as a data warehouse, which is why we've seen so many problems trying to force fit a round peg into a square hole using uh, third normal form as a data warehouse. It's just not generally an acceptable practice, causing all kinds of issues. However, there are some similarities and there are some differences between the modeling styles. Now, the first similarity is that we have, in a third normal form table, we have this notion of business key combined with a set of attributes that describe these things, also combined with a set of attributes that are foreign keyed to other, other elements. And in the data vault, we break apart these components into three separate pieces or three separate model, uh, model, yes, model structures. And one is a hub. So the business key translates directly to what we call a hub. The descriptive data translates over to what we call a satellite. And the relationship information can break up into one or more what we call link tables or many-to-many -many tables. So when we look at a third normal form structure, it's very similar to the data vault model. It's about a one to three equivalent. So you've got one table in the third normal form. You should end up with about three structures in the data vault, which, of course, that ratio gets lower and lower over time as you absorb more and more structures from different source systems or more and more foundations, foundational parts of your business into the data vault. So you have less and less structures to actually build. And so that's an interesting component. But let's take a look at this. So the business key is quite plain and simple, very easy transition. The descriptive data, obviously, the third normal form applications only carry the, the current set of information, meaning that updates usually occur in place on the record. So they don't keep history of those updates or those updated records. That's the point of OLTP, right? The process transactions. Keep only the current transaction. The uh, data vault, on the other hand, in the satellite, and the satellite structure is different than a third normal form. Well. Okay, it's a child table of a parent table. The parent table being a hub or a link structure has a satellite structure hanging off of it. And so that's how, that's how we separate those components. It is a child structure, truly. And in it, it has the parent surrogate key. So the parent surrogate key is created. We have a one-to-one -one relationship between the business key and the surrogate sequence. And so that's how the parent key gets created. That parent key migrates into the satellite. We house history information or historical information in the satellite. We might set up one satellite per source system, or we might set up more than that, or different kinds of satellites by type or rate of change or classification of data. There's all kinds of ways to do it. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty and the fundamental difference between the data vault and third normal form modeling. Really, in reality, it is a physical instantiation of the many-to-many -many structure the, in the data vault called a link table that is the fundamental difference between what we do in data warehousing and what third normal form does um, in its structural design. And so from that aspect, let's take a look at a specific case. Suppose I have a salesperson. I've got one salesperson, and that salesperson can manage four or more territories. So we have a one-to-many relationship. And that's today's representation of business rules according to the business users, right? So they're telling me that you have one salesperson, you can have many territories that they manage. Well, let's just say that if we do go into this data warehouse model, and we decide that we're going to enforce that relationship at the model layers. Let's take a look at what happens. I migrate that key for salesperson down into the key for territory, right? Down into the table for territory. So that is a forced many-to-many -many or a relationship that's modeled physically into the data model. And so this can cause problems. Why? Because the minute I go back uh, now, here's where data warehousing differs from, differs from third normal form or OLTP. OLTP is dealing with the current, today's rules, today's application. Data warehousing has to deal with yesterday's rules, yesterday's data, today's data, and tomorrow's data, right? So we definitely want to keep all of those things together. So today's data and tomorrow's data, they all got to stay together. As soon as we go back and load history, we find one salesperson, two salespeople, three salespeople managing one territory. Now, when we try to load that data, it doesn't fit into the relationship that we've architected into the model. 
that forces us to change our entire warehouse. Well, with the data vault, we don't have that problem. With the data vault, we use the link table to house that structure. So with the data vault, we actually have a forced many-to-many, -many, and so that we can house today's business rule, yesterday's business rules of many-to-one, or tomorrow's business rules of many-to-many, one-to-one, one-to-many. It doesn't matter what the business changes their rules to, we can house all of that data in a single link structure. And yes, that introduces more joins, um, but we're going to get to that in yet another video. I'm Dan Listed. I hope you enjoyed this uh, small segment, and uh, I'll see you on the other side.